Let's see if we can move on then. Now, uh, that was the platinum resistance setting. That's where Bevacizumab is approved. But we also have data in the platinum sensitive uh, recurrent disease setting and also in the frontline setting. Uh, and Dr. Coleman, you uh, recently, in fact, uh, you, are re you recently reported at SGO the results of a trial that yeah. looked at that. So yeah. you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it was GOG 213, and um, you know, this was a trial that we worked on for quite a bit of time at the GOG. Uh, it, it's a um, bifactorial design trial, so there's a surgical question. So these are platinum-sensitive patients defined by the six-month interval. Um, at this part, this part of the trial was actually looking at paclitaxel and carboplatinum versus paclitaxel, carboplatinum, and bevacizumab. And um, the, uh, the chemotherapy was given to a max of eight cycles, and then the bevacizumab was given in maintenance until progression. The primary endpoint of the trial, unlike the, all the other bevacizumab <coughs> phase, phase three trials, was overall survival. Um, and that data um, uh, uh, closed for accrual in, in August of uh, 2011 and it matured in November this year. And so I had the um, pleasure um, and honor to be able to present that data at the SGO meeting, which, which basically what we, what we showed was that the, um, the, for the primary endpoint for overall survival, there was um, a numerical increase that was just breaching above the, uh, just uh, um, uh, breached above the um, has ratio of one. So it was 0 0.83, 0 0.829. Um, up to, um, and the upper limit of confidence was, was 1.005, so p-value 0.056. Um, but it amounted to about five-month difference in overall survival, and, and interestingly was the longest overall survival we've seen in any of our um, adjuvant trials. Yeah, and those, those absolute medians for the overall survival were? It was like 37 and 43. Well, yeah. Which uh, two decades ago would have been unheard of Yeah, in ovarian cancer. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for the platinum sensitive recurrent disease setting, I'd like to hear each panel member's very brief opinion <laughs> <laughs> about uh, what you would consider to be the treatment of choice in the platinum uh, sensitive recurrent disease setting. And Dr. Secord, do you want to start? So, before I get there, can I just no. discuss why GOG 213 <laughs> results were significant? Oh, sure. So, Is that a positive trial, by the way? Um, oh, you're Well, bad. I would think <laughs> it, um, well, actually, it's the most positive negative trial we've ever had. <laughs> Five months so, of OS. Yeah. Five months yeah. of OS, well, I, no matter what p-value you put to it. So, yeah. Brad, um, I'm glad we have tape between us. But, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I mean, however you cut it, it did not achieve statistical significance, but it's clinically meaningful, which we rarely oh. ever say. Usually we say it achieves statistical significance, significance but, but it's not, not clinically, clinically meaningful. meaningful. Right. So it's very interesting. But um, I think about you often because there's that old adage that close only counts for hand grenades and horseshoes. Yeah. And maybe you can add statistical design, too. I'm not sure. But, but at any rate, I think it's an important study because in the big picture, it's the fifth study with Bevacizumab now showing activity, mm -hmm. improved progression-free survival, and now this hint of a signal of improved overall survival. And it's the ACE study of, of utilizing anti-angiogenic strategies in ovarian Anti-VEGF. Yes, mm -hmm. anti-VEGF strategy, or even other anti-angiogenic strategies if you can't, trabanonib, yeah, right? That would be nice. It's showing improved progression-free survival. So that's why I think this study is important when you add it together with all those other clinical trials that have been done with these agents that target the tumor microenvironment. So your answer is? My answer is um, this is an area where you have to individualize your therapies, <laughs> discuss with patients the trade-offs of using bevacizumab in the platinum-sensitive setting. Um, these patients are going to do better than those individuals who have platinum-resistant disease. So, now, if they're willing to take the drug for that period of time, they understand the side effects, then absolutely I um, support administration of bevacizumab. But I don't absolutely recommend it. I have a discussion. So we'll put you down as considering your treatment of choice, paclitaxel, carboplatin, bevacizumab. Is that correct? Um, well, you're going to have to write the prescription and treat the patient in 30 minutes. I understand. What are you going to write? But it's not that easy anymore in ovarian cancer. It may have been, but times have changed. So if somebody has a B or say a one or two mutation, you may choose liposomal doxorubicin and carboplatin with that backbone. Assume no BRCA one or two mutation. If you assume not that, not bad neurotoxicity, then I feel very comfortable giving them paclitaxel and carboplatin and, and with or without bevacizumab in individuals who have platinum sensitive disease. So are you gonna write the order for bevacizumab or not? <laughs> I will if they want it. Okay, uh, Rob? I, you know, I, I think that before I saw 213, um, my go-to strategy was PLD Carbo. It's easy, I, we know the side effect profile. I was always a little concerned until it really came out about PLD and Bev, but I think I, I feel comfortable with that now. 
So, um, but after I saw 213, um, and, and, and the, the caveat that we didn't get to talk about, which hopefully someday soon we'll talk about, is the surgical component, because these are patients also that were considered for surgery. And then the hazard strata, the strata, for, the strata and the hazard net strata is, these are patients that have very, very good prognosis, and um, potentially there may be even a larger effect in that group. So I give Pacotax, Carbo, and Bep. Um, but I think for the things that you mentioned, sometimes I'll give PLD Carbo instead. Well, there are always exceptions to every rule, but in general, That's in general what you're yeah. saying is mm -hmm. paclitaxel, carboplatin, and bevacizumab. And bev. Yep. Okay. Brad? So let's, so we're talking about platinum sensitive recurrent ovarian <coughs> cancer. Let's, let's just consider two trials which you've alluded to but haven't mentioned by name. The first was the Calypso trial. Mm -hmm. So the Calypso trial took carbo PLD and carboplatin paclitaxel, and carbo PLD was a little better and a little better tolerated. Mm -hmm. So carbo PLD one, and that's why you used to like it. Mm -hmm. and I still a, like it. Still like I it. I still like it. <laughs> and, then, and then we have another trial called the Oceans trial, which was CarboGem, which is labeled mm -hmm. with or without bevacizumab and showed hazard ratio of 0.48 and about a four month PFS advantage. So that's why many no people OS. that like Bev, no OS, used to like CarboGem Bev. Mm -hmm. Now we have this one. And in fact, to be clear, in Europe, they're comparing those two chemotherapy right. backbones with Bev. Right. CarboGem Bev, Carbo PLD BAV, and that study is essentially completed enrollment and we're waiting. Mm -hmm. The answer to the question though, I have switched like you. <laughs> Carboplatin paclitaxel. It scares me. It, yeah, right? <laughs> but I agree with you, you should be afraid. Um, but, but, the, but, but because there's a five month overall survival and, and, and Angelus just told us that it was clinically important yeah, and meaningful. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. And, and, and so I don't have that same, it, there's something about the biology of paclitaxel and Bev, mm -hmm. whether it is the Aurelia trial on label, whether it is this sort of setting in, in platinum sensitive relapse that makes me want to put them together. And Tom? Then how do you explain Calypso? So Calypso didn't have Bev. So in the absence of Bev, PLD is probably a better choice. Okay, all right. So it, it, probably very much what Angelie said, and, and you're going to get upset me, with me because I do try to individualize a bit based on whether it's 6 to 12 yeah. months, greater yeah. than 12 months, they have neuropathy, Assuming that we where all, they live, yeah, we all schedule they yeah. have. I know, you know, but, but all things being equal, um, I've done pretty much what the rest of the panel's done. If they're, if they're out over 12 months, I, I tend to go with carbopaclitaxel, and in light of the recent data, yeah. I have a strong discussion about adding BEV to those patients. Okay, um, so that uh, sort of takes care of the platinum resistant setting and the platinum sensitive setting.